This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good yawning this morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. It is Wednesday, the 1st of February. It is the first of the month. Good morning and hello, February. It's lovely to see you. Now, it's our regular Wednesday show. On the clock, Guardian Radio AM, mashup, man down, Wednesday. Cecil, I'm going to take a moment because today is the second anniversary of On the Clock. So I just want to say happy birthday. Off right now. You've been on the air for two whole years already? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, man. Thank you. So I want to say happy birthday. To you. I mean, not to me first. But to but who? To the people who made it possible. Okay. To the Guardian staff, to my producers, to the one climate, to the one Wally, to the one Arlington, mm. right? To the station manager, to the sales team, to the receptionist, to the security guard who is making sure you be like green, green at late, you know. Make sure I get up in time. You need to take some pictures. I should do. Yeah, man. But I, I'd like a chick Johnny. You can't take pictures in the light or in the dark, mm. um, which is part of my problem. I have to say happy birthday to all of my guest co-hosts. Okay. Including Mr. Darwin. Who birthday tomorrow? Miguel Thompson. Ah. Look here. Oh, oh uh, the actress. original. Uh, yeah, the original co-host with me on the show. And uh, but you know something about Bohemian man, you know. They mm-hmm. lovely, but they like to upstage you. I said something about the two of you all man them in here. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Ian Munnings. How are you? Good morning, Ian. Another good morning, everybody. <laughs> and ha- can I say happy pre-birthday? Yeah, man. Happy pre-birthday, Ian Munnings. Thank you very much, my brother. Absolutely. You, you look good for 50 cents. Thank you, my sister. I mean, the only... Is I was... I already like I beat played a number, you know, I <laughs> 66. Is I beat that age. <laughs> you like, oh. And thank you for reminding me. I also have a very special happy birthday this morning to Miss Rebecca Ward, a.k.a. Ruby Ward. Happy, happy birthday, ma'am. Happy birthday, Miss Ward. I'm hoping you have a wonderful day from all of your family, mm-hmm. especially your daughter and your granddaughter. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm birthday. Anyway, uh, I am very excited. Today we are talking about a couple of things. Yes. We're talking about uh, sort of tourism. Tourism. Tourism product. So tourism broad. Go oh, ahead. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk a bit about uh, Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean. And what's happening and what the potential, what could The investment happen, itself? Yeah. Okay. On uh, Paradise Island and other investments. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Bay Street proper, right? So you can talk about the port. You know I've been around for the port for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, in honor of the second anniversary, okay. and the fact that we may be talking SBF tomorrow on Culture Thursday, ah. I curated, because I want to be fancy today, a playlist of songs that speak to what used to happen in Nassau Harbor. Okay. And like, you know, our perspective, well, for me, it's like songs about tourism years ago, how the tourism product has changed, the role that Nassau Harbor plays, not just in uh, tourism, but in the lives of Bahamians, right? And, and, and forgive me for this. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where Nassau Harbor is now. I mean, I assume it is not, it's one of those cruise in that Lane. Bay Street area, but I'm not sure what is the Nassau Harbor. Um, forgive me for that. You forgive you for that? I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, really... I just want to thank you for asking that question because I just thought Nassau Harbor is like... Uh, All of it? Where Prince George Wharf is, right? I would assume that's Prince George Wharf. Yeah, but no, the harbor itself is like the harbor is the water. The wharf is the land. 
Okay. See? Or the bridge, right? Like the wharf is like the, the, right. the actual structure you put there. So it's not by Porter Ski? I would assume that Nassau Harbor is near Porter Ski, that area? No, it wouldn't have been. Because remember now, when we used to do sponging, the sponging guys, you know, the song Sponging Money Never Done, yeah. that was actually located right in the back where the port is being built now. But that's not Nassau I'm not Nassau saying that's Nassau, Nassau Harbor. Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is okay. the part of the conversation, right? Uh, because Nassau... The city, Charlestown, historic Nassau, right? Nassau, the city, I think the eastern limit is Mackey Street. Okay. I'm mm-hmm. not sure where the western limit is, right? But the eastern limit is Mackey Street, at least in terms of like traffic controls, because mm-hmm. you, you're supposed to drive 25 miles per hour max in the city limits, right? Mm-hmm. I think Mackey Street is that delineation. Uh, but I always thought that Nassau Harbor was sort of pushing from... Uh, Maybe from Mackey straight up past to the end of Prince George Wharf. Interesting. Or maybe even further past that, right? But that, so that's a thing that we need to do. Close to the fish fry. We need to, to, to define and describe, right, what Nassau Harbor is. Why I say that? Because maybe we need a, his, a, 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 a historic starting point, right? Okay. In ter- so when we're developing this new product downtown, historic Nassau, the, the land and the water, that we have a starting point, you know, and that starting point, I think, should be Nassau Harbor. What was it? Where was it? What, what, what were the delineations, right? Like, is it economic, a, a legal, a geographic? Economic. Right? Like, because over the, the hill... The sponging, oh, the sponging. Yeah. You know the song, that's when the guy sing, sponging money never done. I know the remix. The remix say <laughs> FTX money never done. Me say FTX money, money never have, done. Haven't heard it. You haven't heard it, Dave? Haven't heard it. I don't know what y'all be listening to in Foxa. Mm. Must be listening to Don't Mind. Funky Nas. Livingston Josiah is the JP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is sirens. I hope you playing Funky Nas all today. Yeah. No, I don't have. In fact, sir, I don't have Funky Nassau. <laughs> I, I get this right back to you. I thought I was just mine. No, no, I give it right back to you. In fact, I got a playlist today, sir. The first song we played is by Eric Mins, uh, Sailboats in Nassau Harbor. Right? Well, I owe Spongin' Money on that because the song says Spongin' Money Never Done. That, that, was, that was the anthem. Um, especially back in those days when sponging was up and, and everything was, was trade was Listen, moving. I would write it. I, I don't understand why we don't have a remix of this already, right? Because uh, straw market money. Remember when we thought straw market money would never done? Yeah. Straw market money. Or well, they made some money. Yeah. Remember when we thought taxi money would never done? Or well, they're still making some money. Not as much as they used to make. I don't think the straw market may be making, but I think the taxi drivers. Uh, Not as much as you make. I mean, the, the, the pool may be the same, but the, the amount of people who have to share out the pool. Mm. Is a lot different. Mm-hmm. I, I agree uh, with that. You know, and so I like that song, Sailboats in Nassau Harbor. Look, I had a, a story. You know, I have like 17 stories. I had to knock one off uh, the list, but there's a story in the papers about high end yacht services, right? Like, what is the port? One of the things the port is going to offer is uh, a service to. Why are you laughing? To high end yachts, right? <laughs> I only could smile, you know, as we define our tourism product and who we're going after. And, of course, we, they say that Nassau, New Providence, and the Bahamas in general, is a high-end product, uh-huh. right? And that they are trying to move again from this low-end product, with, in, in quotes, the cruise ship passengers, with, which would be at the lower end, mm-hmm. right? And to know that the port, which caters to the cruise ship, also is now catered to the high end. It, it's, it's, it's telling a tale on where we're moving and who will be included in this tourism product. I mean, absolutely, Cecil. I mean, absolutely, this is it. When the uh, pandemic hit us, right, and we, we could sit up and breathe, we stopped panicking, and the government was able to sort of give us some timelines, right, and, and, and some sense of direction. I felt it important to tell the Bahamian people, like, as the tourism product begins to reopen, right, as we reopen for tourism, I think it's important for Bahamians to understand the government's uh, mindset, the government's plan, their agenda, and their, what their focus is for tourism. And it was obvious from that point that the, the Bahamian government's ideal tourist product is a super high-end product. And so it's like Albany, and if you look at the cruise ship 
versus the ideal product for the country, right? You're looking at like Albany versus. But it's it's essential for the for the young Bahamians entrepreneurs to understand that the market that we call tourism is open is an open is an open market. Mm-hmm. So you have to get creative in what, what it is that you ultimately want to do or doing. We could we discussed the other day with the car washing. The young men, not that you're discrediting them from washing the cars, but you realize that the Bahamas has one of the largest boat registries in the world. Mm-hmm. And having that particular having that being said, that means that these young men need to now come from washing cars to now going to now taking care of boats. That's mm-hmm. just the reality of things. Uh, but before all of that, mm-hmm. and I know Aaron started off with the government's agenda and the high-end market. Um, I, the question I would put to you, both yeah. of you, whose job is it to inform the, the populace in general what is the national agenda for tourism and define it? Like, knowing now, just at me, us analyzing it, yeah. We want a high-end product. That yeah. is what we are selling. And because we are selling a high-end product, we need the labor in the Bahamas to be high-end, mm-hmm. right? That means they need to be trained. That needs to be, needs to be uh, socialized in a particular type of way. Mm-hmm. Now, there, are, there is a narrative that we are lacking in that, mm-hmm. right? And I would put this to you that perhaps we are lacking because we don't know the criteria for the high end. Right. That's or that it. we are offering a right. high end. Not right. That's it right there. Not that we are incapable mm-hmm. of offering that service, mm-hmm. right? That we don't understand our role in the wider tourism the product. Wider tourism we product. don't understand what the government's goal is, what mm-hmm. they're doing. We need to know what you're doing so we can fit in. In fact, it's so important in today's uh, Guardian in the business section. We have an article uh, featuring commentary by Chester Cooper, okay. Minister for Aviation. The article is East of East Street Buildings Eyed for Demolition, Government Drafts City Management Laws, right? And in this article, he, he talks about many things, including what can we basically put on Bay Street? What are we going to provide for tourists once we beautify this area, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in yesterday's news report, there is a, another article... I think this one here. Okay. DPM urges... You're taking all your notes back. Grand Bahamians to improve tourism experience, right? And he's speaking specifically to Grand Bahamians. uh, However, he stressed that the stakeholders must do their part. Cooper said that... uh, Basically, Cooper said Grand Bahamians need to provide things for people... But that's going to be a bit difficult to learn. The reality is that we... we we, it, things didn't just happen yesterday. We know the condition of Grand Bahama. We know what they're experiencing. We know that in order for that product to, to, to take off the way they would expect it to be, those persons need some financial assistance to make that work. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to happen overnight, but we know that the reality is they Grand Bahama is not doing too good. They have access to money, so it's, money is not the issue. If it's, they're having access to the money, is not trickling down to the people, then that's something wrong. Something is wrong with that. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a point to make. Not that whether they have the money or not, but that it's not as just as simple as, oh, okay, I got a little investment I could pull from to create a company. People need to be able to coordinate. You can't just start a business ah, on its own. They makeshift. have to be a part of a system, right? Yes, it can't be makeshift. It can't be makeshift. Right. For instance, I wanted to talk about, and I hope I get a second to talk about uh, a particular particular issues at PMH, right? Because that's also in the news. Um, Blood donations. Are that serious? We had a, uh, an incident with Miss Darby, mm-hmm. unable to get the blood that she needed for particular procedures. I'm supposed to have a show on that later on. Right. Then we find... The procedures on how to get blood. Get right. Blood. Then we find out that there are a number of entities and individuals organizing blood drives, but it doesn't appear as if they're coordinating with the hospital. Hmm. Right. And because they're not coordinating with the hospital, the hospital will say, well, listen, we are actually oversaturated. We have an expiry date. We have an expiry Mind date. Mind you, I had that narrative, and, and, and the hospital persons are saying something different. And this is why I said, okay, I'll make space for you. I'm just trying to... To, to be, provide a space for them to speak. Provide a space but, for them but to the speak. Point and is, to explain that point, which you're saying make now. Right. That 
those people who are organizing blood donation drives have to coordinate yes. with the hospital and the healthcare system yes. to Absolutely. ensure that when the blood is collected, mm -hmm. that it can be used, that it won't be wasted, yes. right? That it's not a wasted effort. Yes. And that's that's the point I'm driving at. Yes. It's not enough to tell people, well, you got the money, mm -hmm. and you need some ideas now and make it happen. People need to be able to operate within an environment. The investors, the people, the investment, Need to, they need to be able to give them a degree of certainty that there's, there's a likelihood that this will survive, this business will survive, because the government is focused on providing the resources necessary for all of these businesses. They got technical support. They got the Tourism Development Center. Yes. They have resources available to businesses, not just to support the growth of that one business, mm -hmm. but to ensure that the, the businesses in that ecosystem mm -hmm. are supported, are supporting each other. And not working against each other. And 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 I appreciate this conversation because you know I've been having tourism conversations for the entire week. Yeah. And I appreciate you guided this, and I, I hope we, we use the two hours to do this, right? Yeah, yeah. But I want to start from here. Okay. Right. We're gonna start from Bay Street, and of course I'm gonna bring in Grand Bahama in in it, and of course Abaco in it. Yeah. My question is: Is there a narrative or description of what it is that we want to be selling? And I'm and I saying that Bay Street is important because it represents the entire tourism product. Mm -hmm. How Bay Street looks, how Bay Street feels, basically, technically, um, represents the entire tourism product throughout the Bahamas. Because yeah. Bay Street is our main street. Yeah. The idea that it, it, it seems uh, um, um, gaunt on the eastern side of Bay Street, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, anemic, like that's a good word. Yeah. Anemic on the eastern side of Bay Street tells a testament about the entire tourism product. Oh, yeah. So my question is, who's responsible for telling the nation again what it is that we are pursuing? And because of, I, but after we identify what it is that we want, what, tur what our tourism product is going to look like, how are we going to get there? Who is going to be responsible for that? Is that the minister mm -hmm. who comes, in, uh, who's... Uh, assigned there or every five years or political in general or is that the tourism director general mm -hmm. whose job it is to make things happen right or is it the Bay Street Association or is it the uh, Bay Street re redeveloping persons I I'm just not I haven't I don't believe there's a buy-in ability because clearly there's not a buy-in ability because nothing is happening mm -hmm. so <laughs> surely someone needs to buy into the concept but there's a reason for that I believe see mm -hmm. Um, because um, I believe um, during the pandemic time, the, the restructuring... No, this this pre-pandemic... No, no, I'm saying, I, I believe during that time, the restructuring of Bay Street should have been done. Oh. You know, uh, and I'm also saying now that we know what the problems are. We, we, we know that there are only certain parts of Bay Street that the tourists really um, are recommended to, to actually be. Um, and we look at the eastern part of, of Bay Street, and you mm -hmm. say it's, it seems to be desolate, and a lot of the buildings and so forth um, are, are not up to par. I, in, my, in my opinion, they should have been demolished some time back. Mm -hmm. The question is, is the product downtown, if, are, the, are the persons responsible for having these buildings, are they above approach, in a sense, if a government cannot enforce that they will re remove these buildings, renovate these buildings, and so forth, that and that to do what, what is needed to be done. The reality of it is that the product, what we call um, the Bahamas, is a destination. We are selling a destination. So, in my opinion, we need to find more places that we can actually have tourists that flow through, not just Bay Street itself. Because the Bahamas mm -hmm. is bigger than just Bay Street. Yeah. Um, and, and first of all, you cannot enforce laws where the government is guilty of. You, it, Bay Street is not separate from, separated from the rest of the Bahamas. Unless you make laws and ordinances that say that Bay Street is run by a particular district of people, and then you can have laws for Bay Street proper. But at this present time, the government has a number of dilapidated buildings where they're not doing anything. Well, so you right? can't tell me to fix my building when your building is not fixed. Well, we had an urban renewal project where um, the, buildings were demolished pause, pause, over pause, the hill. Pause, pause. Why you but talk, they weren't demolished on Bay Street. Why you talk, that's what I'm about to ask you. Why are you even referencing urban renewal and Bay Street in the same sentence? Those two things are ex totally and ultimately exclusive of each other. I need you to, under, I need you to know that. <laughs> and, 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 and plus, when you analyze urban renew, renewal, right, mm -hmm. we know that the Camp family, yes. right, who owns most of the top of the hill, uh, East Street. East Street. Mm -hmm. 
none of their buildings got demolished. <laughs> and they have scores a billion. So I hear you used the urban renewal reference. Other buildings but, were broken down. Other buildings were broken yeah, down. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's small buildings here. No, we're apartments. About, we say I, apartment well, buildings. I'm, I'm talking about real buildings. I'm, if you go right next to Super Value on, on, Super Value on East Street, uh, where Super Value meets uh, Wolf Road, we have a number of politicians. Oh, uh, we have a number of politicians... Uh, a number of politicians who own buildings, their yeah. homestead, mm-hmm. right? And those buildings are falling down and dilapidated. So I hear the narrative that there needs to be enforcement, but it can't be enforcement unless there's laws. And, and the first thing is, again, going back to the initial, there needs to be someone to give a narrative right. as to what is our objective moving forward. Mm-hmm. And if our objective moving forward is to demolish one or two buildings, find the owners and say, we're going to partner with you. Look like you can't afford to knock it down, but we are prepared to do it for you. And, um, what, and whatever else assistance, that needs to be enunciated to the general public. Mm-hmm. And there needs to be buying ability about it, like what I'm saying before. And that, that we say, okay, I see where you're going. Yeah. I just don't necessarily know if I see where our tourism product for Bay Street is going. What is the, the next step? What, what is it we trying to build exactly? It All just right. seems like independent projects are happening. Mm-hmm. And they're hoping that it, it'd be a mashup eventually, like how we, what we call the show. Like, they, they, for the redevelopment of Bay Street, they call the, um, the embassy, the United States embassy is part of the redevelopment of Bay Street. But does that have anything to do with our tourism it's product? To what? It's a part of our redevelopment <laughs> of Bay Street. The, Hold on, pause. What? The, you mean the U.S. Embassy who mm-hmm. is on Shirley Street? Yes, mm-hmm. it's part of the Bay Street redeve- re- redevelopment. The next thing, it could be a part of the 50th Independence Celebration. Any minute. And then you have the building of Central the Central Bank, Bank mm-hmm. is also part of the re- re- uh, development of... You mean the of, one on of, Frederick Street with no, with no light? What's going on top of the hill on East Hill Street, right? Uh, it's also going to be a part of the redevelopment, uh, which of, would suggest to me, right? Like the, these are the parts of the conversation that are missing, right? Because Bay Street is no longer a road. No, Bay Street is a zone it's now, a zone, yes. right? Like that's, and I, and I imagine that that's the thinking as well. Uh, and and you're right. Who who's in charge of it? Who is responsible for having the conversation with Bahamians? Because the most important conversations haven't taken place yet, right? So who should be a part of the conversation? Uh, the director general. Of course, the minister should be a part of the conversation, but the initial part of the conversation should be uh, uh, technical, technical-driven, not uh, policy-driven, right? Like, uh, then we need culture. We need not just culture, we need AMMC, like actively involved. Not just at the table or taking notes, actively involved. In fact, that needs to drive the discussion, right? Because if we let economics alone drive the discussion, we have already seen that what economics has done has taken Bay Street from a road and made it a zone, right? Mm-hmm. Made it a whole area. Uh, we got this issue of gentrification. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I hate to say it, but Ministry of Works should be a part of of the conversation. And uh, I don't, th- there needs to be a particular unit within Ministry of Works or that coordinates primarily with Ministry of Works. Because how do you make those technical decisions about the redevelopment of historic Nassau, downtown Bay Street, and not consider the historic cultural implications? Like how the Anglican Church led the US Embassy by that most valuable the most valuable, one of the most valuable historic properties in the country, on the island, in the area, tear down all the silk cotton trees. There's been no real consider, and if there was a real consideration, you considered it for a moment and put it on the side. No real consideration of the historic and cultural implications of the decisions that are being made in that downtown Bay Street area. What about the conversation about gentrification? And not just the loss of, of, of land, the loss of culture and history, right? And, and who are, the, like you say, who are the coordinating mechanisms? Who is doing the work? And then who is talking to us? Who's talking to the general public? Who's talking to the other stakeholders? Because looking at the general public is a stakeholder. You're talking about Charlestown, historic Nassau. How could <laughs> the general public not be a part of the conversation? <laughs> and allow me to beat you. Right. Uh, first, I want to commend the Ministry of Tourism, of course, by extension, the Minister of Tourism mm-hmm. for 
uh, identifying nine properties east of East Street. That's, I think that's the term he used, east of East mm -hmm. Street, that will be demolished, right? Mm -hmm. And he read in detail of what, uh, what they plan to do in terms of artisans, mm -hmm. right? But how does that fit into the overall development of Bay Street? Right. How was these buildings identified to say which buildings? And which, what are the buildings? There should have been a, a, a picture, a pictorial to say these are the buildings that we have identified, mm -hmm. right? And they will be demolished. So, you, so I can have a visual say, okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of this redevelopment in terms of uh, I, I see it. Then I think now, right, mm -hmm. what if the owners of the property, right, are not ready to develop these bulldozed buildings? Mm -hmm. Right? So now it becomes an empty spot. Mm -hmm. Vacant lot. A vacant lot or a vacant lot parking park. Lot, parking lot. lot. Park. See, there's no narrative <laughs> of what we plan to do yeah. and, with and, the spot. And, 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 and your stakeholders, the general public, who you're crying to, to stand up to the plate and begin doing the work, right? Of contributing, using your money, building businesses, building experiences for tourists. You got to engage them. They need to be prepared. They see y'all just think y'all just think that like this it's about seven of these by them who have like so much money. You just got to call them. I mean like I've seen it with on a smaller scale. You just got to call them and they could authorize it, right? It's like nothing. You can no longer rely on those people. You need to rely on the wider public, but you need to give them the time to be able, like you say, Cecil, to participate. When I see that the thing is sitting empty for a month, I, I already have my plan. I'm going to the property owner and I can say, boy, look here, I ain't sure what you're going to do with this property, but here's an idea. Sign this NDA and I can show you the idea. And let's see if we and could work together. rent your empty spot and tell you ready to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Right. But... Um, I Go ahead. You want to say something before I mention this? Yeah, I want you to mention that. Then let me read some text and let me play some song. Oh, okay, forget about the songs and you had a good list. Um, I, I, what I'm thinking, right, yeah. is that um, the Ministry of, of Tourism partner with the owners, mm -hmm. right? And the owners have agreed for it to be bulldozed. Mm -hmm. And now the, the minist ministry said that they're looking for artisans to now come forward Mm -hmm. and volunteer their time and energy, or not volunteer, yeah. uh, to... to uh, contribute, contribute is the word that he used. Because yeah. I could be sure they can get compensated somehow. A pause. Just but I want to know, how does that fit into the tourism product that we try and to well, listen, sell? This is, this is important. I can tell you why. Let's let's do a little history. Do you know where the term East of East Street comes from? No. The first time I heard the term East of East Street, it was being used by an artist collective that came together in partnership, I think, with the downtown... Uh, right, the, right uh, the, anyway, Simon was a part of that. Uh, I think Philip Simon, mm -hmm. for a minute. They came together to essentially beautify East of East Street, and they had beautiful murals yeah, on the building that was known as the Hub Building, where we had art, the art gallery performances, murals on the north side, the south side of the road. It's the artists that had already had the idea, right? And so I, with you... Right? I, I complicated a little bit. I with you. The fact that they don't ever reference that the term itself came from the artist, but here you are telling the artist, like at any point in time, y'all could contribute if you want. Right? Suggest that, what, that you're on the right track, Cecil. There's a lack of coordination. There's a lack of institutional knowledge. Communication. Ab and Right. About what's been happening on the ground in that area. They would have already known who to have gone to. The minister would have come to this press conference not asking artists to contribute, but naming names. And you could even, Minister Cooper, you could even shame them. You don't know how the old people is do it? They call your name ahead of time, knowing that they can't pay you, but you name already called, so you better show up to work, right? So the old people do it. It, it just makes it seem like it's going to be a long time, like, we, like no, a two-year project it's after you knock down this, 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 these nine buildings. Even longer than that. And one of the things I think was referenced, I got a couple of articles here, right, uh, from the last week. An article from the Nassau Tribune. BID, bid is missing piece of downtown's puzzle. That's an important article to read, right? But when you read that, uh, I think Mora, Mike Mora, addresses some of the potential concerns of the business owners, right? Same thing you say, we don't, we're not sure what's happening. Here's another thing. 
Cruise ship passengers are typically what you refer to as KFC passengers in the context of our wider tourism product. We're looking for lobster and steak passengers, but the cruise ship passenger is a KFC passenger. That's not a, a, a judgment in character. That's a judgment in economics. They come to spend KFC money. Facts. They ain't come to spend lobster and steak money. And so maybe the property owners are hesitant to invest grand amounts of money into a product that historically produces limited amount of revenue. And so it's incumbent upon whoever's in charge of the space to explain that the space is not just to accommodate your typical tourist, uh, cruise tourists. It's also to accommodate the high-end yacht business, right? And then whatever springs off from there. There's also for your heads and beds customers to come down here and enjoy it. Uh, that, that you could, and I hate to say this, but ideas are ideas. You could be running a high-end Airbnb, spend a night at the penthouse on the harbor. It's just one night, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of Airbnbs that reduce the inventory for Bahamians who need housing. But if we could convince the cruise ship Listen, if you could convince the cruise ship to spend the night, if we could get them back to spending the night in New Providence, and you get to rent the most beautiful penthouse in the harbor overlooking all of Now you're talking five years, ten years from here. I, I understand. See, How I long understand. you think you take you a money tree to grow? You got to build. <laughs> you got to build. The, you see, you build it and they will come. So I, I hear what you want to yeah. convince the cruise ship people to do. But we need to do things first and then convince them. But, but, but what I'm saying is, is that we, that's, that's the type five, of... Five, ten years away That's from, the know. type of investment I believe that those people who are hesitant to spend their money and improve their projects are waiting on. But a, but a project of that magnitude for the reconstruction of Bay Street, I my assumption would be that government has the the autonom autonomy of, of making or, or making those persons, those private vendors or persons that own those buildings to make them renovate the building. Otherwise, government has How? the right to demolish How? those buildings. No. They, we've seen it done on the over the hill. So what's good for them is good no. also for Big Street. Because the over the hill buildings have no owner. They nor, have to have owners. Nor they, do everything they, has owner. Nor do they have lawyers. But we they have, have owner. We, we got to understand that the owners of these property all accuse our uh, cases. But Aaron, do we have legislation in place for... They create the laws. Do, do we have legislation in, 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 in implemented in terms of infrastructural development no. for our country? No. I'm sure I it's mean, there. Listen, we have a law that say if the government want to acquire your land, they could acquire yes, it. Yes, that's the yes. law. And pay fair value. Yeah, no, these, and pay fair value. These are billion dollar property. I'm not sure if our government don't, is prepared. Don't, don't go there. Because if they are, what you're saying, uh, you're insinuating that they are, then my question would be, what are the property taxes or have they been collected from those There's particular no people? There's no property tax. And, you, and they can't prepare, say it. And plus they prepare to pay it. Are they are? Uh, 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 they have, have they been paid? Are they, are they being paid up to the day? Any you know, host get taken? Pardon? Any places got taken? Of course they're paying it. But producer... <laughs> That's an assumption. Dear gentlemen, I need to read these texts. Producer, I want you to play another song from the list. Uh, anything by George Simonette. While we go in there, let me... First of all, and second thing, producer, you know any songs about the Bay Street Boys? <laughs> See, we sing songs about legends, but we ain't got no song about the Bay Street. Ed Lock. Y'all are trying to take the rest of the Aaron Ed Lock. We have any song about the Sunshine Boys? Ed oh, Lock. my goodness. Dear text is on the other side of this break. I'm going to get to your text. We're going to continue talking about this product. And I'm playing these songs today because I want you all to know, people have been thinking about it. I don't know when we stopped thinking about it. But they were thinking and singing about it. You stay tuned. You're on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM on the On The Clock Guardian Radio AM Man Down Mashup Wednesday, second anniversary of On The Clock. Stay tuned. Drinking champagne and whiskey, lots of beer. In little Nassau, little Nassau. Always fill your hearts with cheer In Little Nassau, Little Nassau Now, when you go, please come again But don't forget to bring along all of your friends To Little Nassau, Little Nassau You'll have a wonderful time in Nassau Always on the go? Miss now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. 
Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The new Guardian Radio app is here. Listen live to all our Guardian Radio shows and live video stream select programs in our studio. Get information about Guardian Radio shows and our hosts. Send messages including text, email, and even call. All from our amazing new Guardian Radio app. Download it free today in your app store for your Apple device or Play Store for your Android device. The all new and improved Guardian Radio app. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You are on the clock and the Guardian Radio AM Man Down Mashup Wednesday. We're talking tourism, tourism product. We're talking Bay Street downtown and where do we go from here? That song we came back in on is Jumbe Village by Al Kali and the VIPs. And who is it about? Isn't it about Ed Moxie? Yeah, okay, just making sure that you know your history. Um, Hold on, let's, let's go right here. Now, mm-hmm. here's the next thing. Somebody tell me that Ed Moxie, mm-hmm. who sing Bush Medicine, you mm-hmm. know, the song, yes. Arena, mm-hmm. and Ed Moxie, the first, the Ed Moxie of the first cabinet at the Bahamas, I think it's the first cabinet, first yes, independent, yes, 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 that yes. they are not the same people. Are they the same people? They're the same people, right? Ed Moxie's a politician. Yeah, yes. but he also is a singer. He's also I mean, he's a Reagan scraper. Yeah, he's the same singer. Same yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought. Somebody tell me no. I tell person. them I believe so. Yeah, anyway, right. let's go on. Right. You need to know Ed Moxie mm-hmm. to be a part of this conference, to sit on whatever board. You need to know Ed Moxie. And I know we got to go to, uh, to the text line, and I didn't see a caller's calling yeah, yeah. in right now. But I want to interject the port. Yeah. The, the, again, the Bay Street product and the port and what it means to the Bay Street product in the whole. What is it? that the port is going to add to Bay Street and what kind of product is the port. I don't, I'm not sure if the Bahamian people appreciate what it is that our government is partnering with, right? Yeah. And, and where and how we should benefit from it. And mm-hmm. I think that that needs to be hashed out. Uh, be, I believe more Bahamians need to be engaged oh, in yeah. regarding it. And so they can appreciate it. I see it. I see it. And, and I get to say that buying ability, mm-hmm. uh, buyability, I think that needs to be hashed out more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, uh, well, no, that was actually a question. What is the point? <laughs> In terms of what is it they try and to, they, they, it plans to be? You mentioned that it's, it's going to be some yachts, right? Well, there's a, there's a, a super high-end uh, marina. It appears as if it's... Uh, it's well, okay, you've been on a cruise. I've been on a cruise, yes. right? Uh, I was shocked when I went on the cruise. I, I was shocked. Like, this, the Bahamas is one of the only places where you have multiple things you could do yes. if you left the designated yes. port area. Yes. Right? Um, We're the most historic uh, places in the Caribbean per square foot, in terms of per square mile, in terms right. of going to find things. And to so, do. as far as I'm concerned, the port is a place to entertain tourists who are not quite sure how far away from the cruise ship they want to go. Like, they want to experience the Bahamas, but they've never been here before. They don't know what the traffic is like. Uh, and, and, and they're a little concerned, and they don't want to go too far from the cruise ship. I think that's so what the, the port So the port represents a safe spot for those who don't want to venture far. It's a, it's a spot for tourists, yes. right, to be entertained. But the reason I paused for a second, because I was thinking, I would rather use the Gilbert Morris model, right? And I imagine that Dr., uh, Gilbert Morris would say, imagine that the port didn't exist. <laughs> like as a Bahamian uh, vendor in the tourism space, you actually have to act as if the port doesn't exist. And these tourists just show up. Yes. For some reason, the tourists just show up on Bay Street. 
and it's our job to entertain them. And the, the port doesn't exist. There's nothing for them to do. There's no alternative. You need to find something for but them to do. The, the, the thing, the thing that I, I, I looked at the port thing, and um, I'm seeing how the vendors are, are duplicating would be currently have like the straw markets, the little vendors and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that if they have this little port thing, and this is going to be secured, that once tourists get there, the information from the cruise ships are going to say to them, like they've been suggesting, um, stay in this particular area when you get there. You can find, you can eat, you can have all of the Bahamian artistries, etc. These are the things that you're going to be able to see. So what happens to my existing straw markets, my existing other things that are outside or persons that are not inside it of the port? It becomes anemic. <laughs> it's not in the port. And then if those same KFC passengers come in, and they are shopping already, or they shop within the port district, then what happens when they come outside of the port district? Do they still spend, or they just observe, or they just look? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, man. It just forces us to um, to reevaluate and to uh, innovate. Mm -hmm. now, clearly, there'll be two Bay Street. <laughs> Pause. Right? Look at the old man. Them. You see the song we just played, Go ahead. "Little Nassau" by George Simonet. <laughs> mm -hmm. As as you were talking, Ian, uh, did, uh, that's the answer. What did they plan to do with the port? A little Nassau. Or that becomes new Nassau, and then the base tree becomes little Nassau. So oh, that's just little Nassau. Right there. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, that but over there. it becomes a, a replication mm -hmm. of Nassau. So the key for people who are operating outside of that space, right, is this. First of all, you don't want to fight your government because they're using your money anyway. It don't make sense. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you begin, you try to understand the nature of the thing that you're competing with. That's the discussion. Right. Today. And then you aim to provide experiences that they cannot provide in the port. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. You will compete with them. They got more money than you. You provide things that, that cannot be provided in the port, no matter what. And you need to go to the text, but guess what yeah. the port could have? The, the port could have a, a chicken shack. No. The port Ag will have... Against the law. No, no port will have the a chicken shack. The port can't have a chicken shack. And, a, shack. and the port, and if it's up to me, the port cannot... Look here. The port have one bar. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I have a butcher. No, the port, port have one bar, mm -hmm. and you can't buy alcohol. You could only buy one type of alcohol on the port, and all mm -hmm. the rest of the alcohol. She is, she, she but is you can't look, get a Bahama Mama. You can't get a Bahamian Bear. In the port, Eric, they come outside the port to have get the same thing. Have you considered one extra thing there? Yeah. We're talking about Bahamians being able to have some businesses that the port doesn't offer. But have you have you thought about um, what is taking place now and what will be taking place when that port is finished? The pre-bookings where the, the cruise liners already pre-booked their people who they already contacted to do business with. Okay, no, pause, pause. So what you're saying no, is that's that... That's not a bad thing, eh? No, no, what inside you, the port. No, wait, pause, wait, wait, no, no. The tourism... <laughs> de uh, what I imagine the Tourism Development Corporation operates like, if you want to be a vendor that provides experiences within the port structure, whether you have a, a brick and mortar, right? Whether you have a static booth, or whether you, like me, walk around the place and sell rum fingers because they pay for, for church prayer meeting in Parliament, that you have to be like accredited, you have to go th or certified, you have to go through a tourism corporation development uh, program training to be able to operate inside there. So we, and that's the whole point, we understand that only people who are vetted to do trade in the port space can uh, be allowed to do trade in the port space. We worry, that's what I say, and act like the port don't exist. What happens when they get outside the port space? But right now the tours are helter skelter. You come outside the cruise ship and you you reach to the, what that street is by just George George Street. Yeah, I think right, so. By, by the wharf right there. Pompey Square, George Street. No, no, no right I'm there. talking about right where the bank, uh, Scotia Bank is, where where okay. that where that restaurant would close down used to be. Parliament Street, eh? No, no, no. In, in that where Rosson Square, where the, where the bus of Sir Milo is. That that street there by by Milo Butler. On the western side, that's Parliament on Street. The, on the northern side. The north side. Right, right, the, right. That's what that's... You know, where the taxis just be lined up and, and where the horse and carriage... Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? If you come out there, there are about scores, but maybe 40, 50 tour operators who say, come this way. And they and you see people, uh, tourists, just recently uh, commenting on it on, on one of their tourist cruise center, that it just seems unorganized. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know, will the co construction of the port, the operation of port, fix that? Or that still exists, just that not inside the port. But when you come outside the port, you see right. this, this 30, 40 behemoths say, 
yeah. pulling you this that, way. That's going to be that that's way. gonna be removed. I think but where do they go? They're going to be called just like how when you pull up to the airport. So they call a taxi when the person. Well, no. So that's like right, that's if you want to interact at that level. I say I don't think you should be able to restrict a tourist access to an activity just because it's not certified by Ministry of Tourism, right? Like because then then it becomes it becomes very um, political class mm -hmm. uh, who you know kind of vibe, right? There should be though uh, that close to the port. There should be a space though that the other vendors, right? Like mm -hmm. you may not be the other vendors organize themselves. They should be given a space, right? Mm -hmm. Where the sign up say excursions, yes. right? Maybe it don't have the the, the tourism come rent one scooter label on it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can rent within the development. Yeah, because scooter. No, no, not on the port. This outside, outside the that's port. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, outside, yeah. we need a designated area. Yeah, and I think that that should be done. I don't. I, I, your your local people are already competing against these major entities, the cruise ships, right? The, mm -hmm. the major hotels, even your own. You even competing against your own Ministry of Tourism in some instances. The fight shouldn't be that hard. There should be a space. So you may not be. Tourism Development Center certified to interact on the port, but there should be another degree of, of verification or certification that allows you to, to advertise your excursions on the port. Because there are other checks and balances. You can't just have a business, right? You gotta have a business license. The police should inspect something. There's, there's a, 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 an inspection sure somewhere, you're up, you're up right? Standards. If you're renting scooters, you got to have a road traffic authorization to do that, right? There should be somebody there should be police out there every day asking the tourists, you sure you're getting on the scooter and these slippers, mm -hmm. miss? Mm -hmm. You don't want to rent a helmet, miss? Yeah. You know, those things should have been happening anyway. And those things support the participation of the smaller businessmen in the larger product. Because you're not, like you say, you're not trying to penalize people. You're not trying to shut them down. You're trying to help them improve so they could eventually be a part of the, the larger product. Well, let's go to the text before we forget, because yeah. I know you wanted to read it, and I keep on bringing up new topics, yeah, yeah. so you're not able to read these things. Okay, the text says, infrastructure is bad, but attitude and the people downtown are an impediment to us moving from the second to last among regional ports. By the way, last place is Freeport. It's rough in Freeport. Okay, so let's do this again. I want to say this again. Having been on a cruise once, just once, only once. No, I've been on dozens yeah. of cruises. I feel like a billion times in my head, but just once. And I run out of the port quickly. I don't stay in the port. <laughs> right. I don't go in the local I port. I want to ask this, who, who voted? First of all, who voted? Is it tourists who don't know nothing about nothing? Mm. Don't know nothing about tourism or the Caribbean? Second of all, when you say the port itself, you mean like the port itself, or you mean like the city of Nassau where the people disembark, like the technical port of landing versus the facility that they land at. Is that what they're voting for? Interesting. Because I've been to some of these other places, I, and I really need to know the criteria upon which you are... I, I, I've been to, like you said, number of these tourist islands, uh, Caribbean islands, and uh, to me, our product is superior. Yeah. So when you, they, people say, oh, we are in last place, and they said, but compared to who? Right. Who's judging? You know? like, yeah. I, I, we have so many things to do. I've the question is judging. I've been to one place, and I asked the boy, he, he insisted he's going to be our guide. And he was cool. He's very polite. His name is Johnny Bravo, like the cartoon. He thought that would, you know, yeah, develop German. an affinity between us. I told him I would like fr fresh fish, because I've been on the boat for a while. You know, fresh fish on the boat like that. I say, we on a port. I want some fresh fish. Well, when I tell you where this gentleman took me, mm. i just glad the police didn't show up. Where did he take you? He took, me to a he took us to a brothel. Nice. I mean, he thought yeah. we wanted fresh fish. <laughs> oh. And, um, and when, what I'm saying is that the Bahamian <laughs> stakeholder that interacts with tourists mm -hmm. have better sense than that. Mm -hmm. Have much better sense than that. And so I'm saying I need to know how this survey yeah. was conducted. The okay. parameters of it. Okay, let's go to another text. It says, doesn't mash up man down Monday sound better than Wednesday? They say the Monday sound. No, man, then... I mean, the man and the mashup and the Monday sounds great. But then you all would think that I'd be in sexist against men. Great show as usual. Happy two years, but they play 50. No, I can't play 50 Cent song. First of all, he's not a Bahamian. If you tell me to play the song where Bahamians know how to make a dollar out of 50 Cent, mm -hmm. I can look for that. Uh, 
As soon as the spot becomes empty, the coconut boys will pile all their coconuts there and sell coconut. Dear Texter, thank you for that point. Hmm. Like, there is a point, though, where you do need oversight and regulation. Policing. Policing, yeah. And I think that's another fear of some of the business owners. Yes. I invest this money, and then three weeks later, somebody of them just piling up their coconut on the side of my building and throwing mm -hmm. the trash in my parking lot. And I must just be happy with it because it's tourism and yeah. we're helping people make money. Yeah. I can understand that sort of attitude and why some people are hesitant to invest. Texas said, they, take, they took you to a brothel, eh? You don't know that's what tourists has come down here for. That's a Bahamian product, too. Well, if you read Ian Strawn's uh, Plantation to Paradise, Tourism and Culture in the Anglophone Caribbean, you get a great sense of what this text is talking about. Mm -hmm. He's not just being rude or flippant, right? We also cannot have this conversation without examining the history of the tourism product again. Yes. And what is it that we sell? What is it that people come here for? What's their expectation mm -hmm. when they come off the boat or off the plane? And can we provide that to them? Do we understand it? Do we understand how it has evolved? And what does it mean to our people if what, 50, 60, 70 years later, sex tourism is still the only thing that we sell in. Mm. It's a nice text. We out of time. I'm going to get to these texts at the other end, on the other side of this break, hey? Yeah, man, we can do that. Absolutely. Thank, thank goodness for two hours. Producer, play uh, Nassau Merengue. Let's close it out. It's been an awesome conversation, one that we need to take weeks and weeks. Yeah, hash it out. And I yeah. appreciate you having this conversation with me. Yeah, man. In fact, I got ideas. You know, I get excited. It's second anniversary. I like ideas. On the next half, I got a bunch of ideas for okay, you. Okay, we do it then. Absolutely. You guys, thanks for tuning in to this first hour of our Wednesday Man Down Mashup. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. When you come to Lil Nassau, everything's so wonderful. When you walk on the Bay Street, everything's so attractive. When you come to Lil Nassau, everything's so wonderful. When you walk on the Bay Street, everything's so attractive. Morena, Nassau Merengue, Nassau Merengue, Nassau Merengue, Nassau Merengue, Mami Tana, Nassau Merengue, Lil Nassau, so wonderful. All tourists to come in Lil Nassau to see what I mean. Everybody come and see in Lil Nassau. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.